Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. Are y'all all right? Shalom. 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 Wait, wait, no, no, cut, cut. <laughs> Try it again. Because I heard him first. I said, hold on. I said, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Shalom. 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 Okay, I'll pray. Okay, how y'all doing? Okay, I'll pray. Brothers, how y'all doing? Good. Good. Sisters, how y'all doing? Alright, alright. Okay, all praise. Y'all scared me for a minute. I'm like, I do realize it is a Sabbath, right? <laughs> we went into captivity for this exact reason, not being happy. You know that, right? Okay, if not, I was gonna read it for you. Okay, okay who's, hey, who's reading for me? Simon, okay. Alright, the title of today's class, we're gonna go over marriage. We're gonna go over marriage. The title of today's class is The Benefits of Proving. The Benefits of Proving. Because there is a benefit in proving. Um, one of the benefits, we want to start out with this. Hey, y'all got that article? It should be on the uh, AV channel. Man allegedly beat girlfriend's son to death with a hammer. I just lost it. Scroll down. According to the reports, a West Virginia man was arrested for allegedly beating his girlfriend's seven-year-old son to death with a hammer. Rashad Akeem Thompson, 34, carried out the alleged assault around 2.45 a.m. on Thursday. When authorities arrived, they found what appeared to be a blood-covered hammer in the living room. They then found the young boy's body on the couch with extreme trauma to the left side of his head. I just lost it, Thomas told police. The boy's mother, 24-year-old Felicia Brown, was also assaulted and sustained several stab wounds, including wounds to the face. She was found at a neighbor's home, bleeding profusely. Ugh, profusely. Brown is currently hospitalized in critical condition. Thompson was charged with first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, child abuse resulting in death, malicious wounding, and two counts of domestic battery. So, uh, scroll back down so you see the brother's face. This is a perfect example why it is important to prove. Because you, at the end of the day, you don't know who you're marrying. But you to go out, because that's what we see a lot in Israel. Brothers getting put out, sisters getting put out, all because of Rod, all because of the Jason. And a lot of brothers and sisters, they want the benefits of marriage but they don't want to put the steps in to actually be married. And this could result, especially for some of you sisters, y'all can go out and get one of these crazy Negroes off the street, and if you got children, he'll kill your kids and try to kill you. Okay, let's start out. Hebrews 13 and 4, you can take that down. Hebrews 13 and 4. And the reason why we're going over this is not just in light of the, the past offense of one of our members. If you see in Israel, it's, it's almost like at least a couple times a week, four or five times a week, you see brothers and sisters getting put out for fornication, put out for adultery. And they're not taking, they're taking their, how can I say this nicely? They're, they're taking their lust over the love of the Most High. They're referring to their lust and their bodily lust rather than the love of their people in getting the kingdom. Read what you got. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Now, how does he judge them? In manners like this. And this is the thing. Whenever we go to camp, whenever we 
talk to our brothers and sisters on the street, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, you can't judge me. Yes, we can't. What they're thinking about is we can't condemn you, which is correct. You don't see none of us picking up stones at camp, but all, all, all we're doing is we're just warning you. Matter of fact, let me give me that in uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 3. That's all we're doing is warning you. Ezekiel 317. That's what our job is. And that's what I was telling uh, some sisters at camp last week. I said, our job is to warn you. It's your job to make a decision. When you get it, read it. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word in my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say it to the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require in thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from the wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man will turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require thy hand. So, the Most High says, look, it's our job to warn you. Whether you get mad or not, that's between you and God. I'm not going to be responsible for not telling you the truth. And then if you mess around and die in your sins, okay, you got killed, and the blood is on my hands. So that means when I'm getting judged by God, I have to give an account of why I didn't tell you. You see how simple that sounds? But a lot of our people, they don't want to hear the truth. Uh, give me uh, 1 John 4 and 1. 1 John 4 and 1. Proving someone in marriage is a very serious matter. It's very serious. And a lot of our people, they take it very lightly. It's not like in the world to where... Marriage in the world is like, uh, how can I say? It's like a glorified boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. They get married and divorced so easily. Or oh, you didn't cook my rice uh, right, I'm going to divorce you. You was out too long at the club, I'm going to divorce you. So where now, in Israel, let me tell my wife, I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you. She's going to say, well, let's you know, take a nap. Let's try again tomorrow. Because there is no divorce in Israel. You work through those things. It's not like the days of old with our forefathers and our, our uh, foremothers to where they had to work through issues in marriage. That's what actually made the marriage better is you learn how to deal with situations. But if you don't know the person, if you spend your first three or four years learning who that person is, you're already in the marriage. You've already messed up. Read what you got. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So the Bible says... Don't believe every spirit. Don't believe just because a brother or a sister comes to the school. Oh, he had officer, he has on fringes. Look at his beard. It's just dripping with oil. This brother looks righteous, but at the house he's a damn demon. Read that again. Beloved, believe not every spirit. This said the Bible says, that's not us saying, the Bible says, don't believe. Every spirit, but what? But try the spirits, whether they whether they are of God. So you try the spirit. How do you try the spirit? You prove him. Matter of fact, give me uh, I think it's John seven and twenty four. I'll have it written down. John seven and twenty four. I think that's what I want. Yes, John seven twenty four. John chapter seven verse twenty four. Uh -huh. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judge. So it says right there, judge not according to the appearance. Don't go by how sister's head wrap looks. You know, oh, this sister, she bows extra low when she shaloms. Oh, she brings me 
uh, all of my food on time. No. That's the whole purpose of proving is to get to know that brother or that sister. Because just like that article we just saw, the brother can look righteous in the school. Hey, matter of fact, put that picture back up. I just want to see the picture real quick. You can see a brother like this in the school and think that, oh, okay, that's a righteous brother. His garment is always ironed. His camp pants is always creased up. Oh, okay, uh, he, I thought he had a full beard. He's got a little goatee crap. You can take that down. But it says, read that again, John 7, 24. John chapter 7, verse 24. Uh -huh. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So it says, do not go by the outward look of a person. You get to know that brother. You get to know that sister. Because this is basically what you're doing when you're proving someone. You're interviewing your future best friend. And if you think about it, you just don't pick any old regular person to be your best friend, do you? What makes a friendship that much stronger? Y'all got to go through some stuff together. Y'all got to go through some ish together. So what you're doing when you're proving a brother or a sister, you're interviewing that person that could potentially be your future best friend. Because matter of fact, let me get that. Uh, Sirach 6 and 7 real quick. Sirach 6 and 7. That's why like brothers and sisters, I mean, you got to put more thought into it. Stuff don't happen, no. You intentionally do certain stuff. But I understand, like, say, if you go out and you commit fornication and the two of you agree to get married, that's one thing. But where, damn what they say, I'm going to go do what I want, then when you get a demon, that's good for you. Huh? When you're deceitful, thank you. When you're deceitful, and you get a demon, whether it be man or woman, that's good for you. Because it said, Scripture says, not me, Scripture says, and what does it say? Uh, a wicked woman is given to a wicked man as a portion. Because the scriptures also tell you, hey, let's read that real quick. I'm going to paraphrase a lot of stuff. Read that for me real quick. Sirach, chapter 6, verse 7. Uh -huh. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Do what? Prove him first. And a lot of us may think that this is talking about just the friendships in here. No, this is even talking about your future spouse. Because go to uh, Sirach 40 and 23. Because it says, if you, if you get a friend, prove them first. Sirach 40 and 23. Sirach chapter 40, verse 23. A, a friend and companion, <clears throat> excuse me. A friend and companion never meet amiss. Above both is a wife with her husband. Read that again. A friend and companion never meet amiss. So it says, a friend and a companion don't meet by accident. Read. But above both is but above a, both a friend and a companion, a friend and an associate. Above them both is what? Is a wife with her husband. Is a wife with her husband. That's why it's important to prove. Because the person that you're marrying, they're going to be more important to you than your best friend. And it's very rare. I've only read it maybe once in the Bible to where a man loved another man more than a wife. His friendship with that man was stronger than the friendship he would have with his wife. And that was with David and Jonathan. Nowhere else have I read, I might be wrong, nowhere else have I read where I've read a friendship that strong. Because it's very rare. But when it comes to a man and a woman, that is your best friend. Give me a Sirach 25 and 1. Sirach, chapter 25, verse 1. Uh -huh. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful before both before God and men. Uh -huh. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. Read it again. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. So God said, look, these three things, I love these three things. Read the unity of brethren. The, the brotherhood, like when us, when we come together, my wife always asks me. She asked me last time. She's like, look, I got to go work in the morning. 
can we please not leave the school late? I, I, I gotta get up early because she knows once I get here, I ain't in no rush to leave. I ain't seen my brothers all week. I'm in no rush to leave. And God says, look, that's a beautiful thing when you get around the brothers, when you get around your sisters and you enjoy their company so much. You're around like-minded people so much that you're not in that big rush to leave. Read. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors, the love of your people, and what? A man and wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. How do you know that you agree with your husband and your wife? Because you prove them. You know that brother. You know that sister. You understand that person before you lay down with them. You understand that person before you make that covenant with them to where, you know what, I'm not going to be with nobody else but you. I'm going to put you, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to financially, emotionally take care of you. Give me uh, John 15 and 12. I'm trying to keep everything in order, but I keep wanting to jump ahead. If y'all have anything, y'all can jump in. John chapter 15, verse 12. Uh -huh. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love than no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So wait a minute. This says, read 13 again. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So remember, brothers, when you're proving, and sisters, when you're proving, this is the name for me. When you're proving a woman, you're interviewing your future best friend. Read 13 again. Greater love have no man than this, uh -huh. that a man lay down his life for his friends. Why am I reading that? Give me Ephesians chapter 5, start at 21. Because brothers, we love, I hear a lot of brothers all the time, we love reading Ephesians 5. But I think we always skip to, what is it, 22? Oh yeah, they always jump to 22. And that's where they stop. Start up at 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Uh -huh. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So it says, submitting yourselves one to another. The same way the wife has to submit to the husband, the husband also submits something to the wife. Because he's telling her, like, look, from this point forward, I'm going to take care of you. There ain't no wham, bam, thank you, man, in Israel. There ain't no ghosting a sister in Israel. If there is, you're not going to be a part of the congregation. Read. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord. Uh -huh. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. So it tells the sisters, like, look, sister, wife, you obey your husband the same way you would obey Jesus Christ himself. And the brothers, you see some of the brothers that chest to God, like, yeah, she got to do I say. You my possession. But there's a flip to that also. He read. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In everything. So unless that man is telling you to sin, unless he's telling you to go sell your behind or hold some drugs or do something illegal or unlawful, do what he says. If he wants his food cooked a certain kind of way, cook it the way he wants it. If he wants to pay the bills in a certain kind of way, the bills are going to get paid the way he wants them to. Because why? A lot of sisters, and this is the funny thing that me out, a lot of sisters do not understand, well, why we got to listen to everything the man said? How come he gets to be in charge? Let's find out. Keep reading. 25. Yes. H Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church uh -huh. and gave himself for it. And did what? And gave himself for it. How did Christ give himself for the church? Uh... Brother Nehemiah, not Nehemiah, uh, Darius, I said Nehemiah, Darius. Yeah, he died for us also. Uh, he went through a uh, uh, whole lot of stripes, a whole lot of hard times for us. Okay, so he, he gave his life for us. Now, he was innocent, correct? He didn't do nothing wrong, correct? Correct. Okay, so that's the trade-off. Yeah, sisters, you got to do what your husband say. You submit to him and do what he says. But the way he submits to you, 
is that if anybody comes to that house to hurt, harm, or your life is in danger, that man has to give up his life for you. And a lot of sisters, they either don't read that or they don't give a damn about that. That's how important that exchange is. All you have to do is do what this man say. Cook his food, wash his drawers, and whatever else he has you do that is lawful. What he has to do, he's financially responsible for you and the children, and if anything happens, he has to forfeit his life for you. Now, does that seem, that sounds fair, right? That sounds fair, right? Oh, so that sounds, that sounds fair, right? That's not a reason. It's really, it's really just that simple. Now, this is the thing. Brothers, would you want to die for one of these ratchet hood rat women out here? Everybody shook their head, no, really fast. I ain't the question out all the way. But check this out. When you don't prove a sister, that's what you're doing. You're putting your life on the line for a hood rat. You're putting your life on the line for somebody who will go out here and shake and twerk their behind in front of everybody. And, and it trips me out when people do it on social media. They be like, hey man, this is my girl right here, man. Check my girl out. Like, bro, that's not your girl, that's everybody's girl. She's shaking her behind for the whole world. Everybody can see the deep crevices of her body. That's everybody's girl. It's not yours. Read that again. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh huh that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So that's the only keeping the commandments. Now, give me uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 14. I want to show you a order real quick, because we got another video. Y'all got that video ready? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances that I deliver them to you. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, mm -hmm. and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, is under his head. So, the Bible gives you an order in very distinct order. It says, the father, the son, man, woman, child. And you know what I'm seeing nowadays? There's a trend to where even the outside world is coming back to this. Because if you remember years ago, brothers would always put women up on a pedestal, women could do no wrong, nobody could hold them accountable for anything. But nowadays, nowadays, you're starting to see a small trend of the order in the house being reestablished. Now, all of y'all know who this man is, right? That's, that's uh, what's his name? Falcon off the Avengers. Anthony Mack. Anthony Mack, well, I call him. That's Falcon, you know. He's also a guy from, what is it, 8 Mile, the Red Meadow. I, I know brothers by 8 Mile. Yeah, I'm not. You know. And you know my brothers do a real good do a real good job of acting when they play a bad guy in one movie, and then when they get to the next movie, play a whole other role, you still don't like them. <laughs> he was too far? Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and play the video. Go ahead and play the video. You and I have something in common. You mm. believe, in a lot of cases, that men and women have roles. Oh, yeah. All right, well, you say it, because oh, people get you mad better believe I it. I'm, I'm from this, uh, yeah, you better believe it. I mean, I, yeah. I, I know you're from New Orleans, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, well, I'm, no. only, I'm only from Jersey, but, yeah, but, but I do believe that yeah. if he wants a sandwich... You make daddy a sandwich. <laughs> Most of the time. No, 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 no. Let me ask you this. Well, okay, let me ask you this. If me and you out, and somebody say something slick to you. You punch him in the face. You want me to smack him in his mouth, yep, right? That's right. So if I take you on a date and I say, look, baby, we're going to go Dutch. No. Exactly. If we walking up to the car and I don't open your car door, what do you say? Open the door. You better believe it. Yeah, no, I, I am with you. I think. So you make daddy a sandwich. I think. <laughs> I will after I get out of the shower. Yeah, yeah. But it'll, it'll get done. If I'm outside cutting that grass. Bring daddy some lemonade. It's hot outside. I'm cutting all this grass. But what's not hot is when girls call the. No, that's all I want. That's all I want. Now, now there are various other videos like this that are popping up more and more. Because check this out. In today's society, women don't want to do that. Like, why well, I gotta make him a sandwich? I shouldn't have to do nothing based on my gender. Well, the Bible says everyone has their role to play. Just like on a football team, basketball team, I use football for example. You don't see the halfback or the running back throwing the ball to nobody, do you? It's a quarterback's job. 
You don't see a wide receiver trying to block nobody, do you? No, his job is to catch the ball. Everyone has their roles. Everyone has their position. And this is the thing, the world is so far out of order. Nobody wants to be in position. No one wants to play their role. But how do you know if the sister or the brother that you want to marry knows how to play their role? By proving them first. That's why it's very important for you brothers and sisters, take the time to get to know brothers. Take the time to get to know sisters. And you got something? When you look at the video and you see uh, that the brother was saying, go make me a sandwich. What's hard about making a sandwich? But when you look into the crowd, you can hear it. You couldn't see it on the video, but you can hear it. The women were like, making you know, so you can hear it. The sisters did not want to make a sandwich. It wasn't nothing hard. I ain't like I'm telling you to go in there and make me a, uh, uh, you know, oh, it's a, it's a four course meal. Yeah, four course meal or whatever. But watch this. And this is the reason why. Go to Isaiah 3 and 12. We've been uh, talking the order of our uh, household of my presence. That's for sure. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Uh -huh. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. And who rule over them? And women rule over them. Now, because as you can see, the women like down Negro, you're going to make your own sandwich. And while you end up, make me a sandwich. Damn. <laughs> Read. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of the, the of thy paths. Facts, because as you see, hey, you don't want to make no sense, but you expect me to do all these things as a man. But when I ask you something simple, you don't want it to fall in place, fall in line. So yeah, I mean, well, we got a lot of uh, work to do, Israel. Hey, matter of fact, jump up to stay there in Isaiah. I'm glad you pulled that. Jump up, stay in Isaiah three. Go up to verse one. Isaiah chapter three, verse one. Uh -huh. For behold, the Lord. The Lord, the Lord of hosts, they'll take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. So this, he's going to list things that God took away from us. Keep going. The mighty man. The what? The mighty man. Read. And the man of war. So think about it. When you see these protests going on, when you see like the Black Lives Matter and all this stuff happening, who's normally the one out front with the bullhorn? The who? Women. Even in other countries, when you see people protesting in other countries, for those of you who watch that the news article that I post uh, every, almost every day, Democracy Now!, they give you news clippings and news articles that happen overseas. You have the same women that are over here doing stuff, they're overseas doing the exact same thing. You see women out front leading. Read. The judge and the prophet. So it says the judge. So when we're out there prophesying, giving God's word, that's why it's so easily to come against us. Because they, they tell us, oh, you can't judge us. You can't show us our sins. Read. And the prophet, and the prudent, and the ancient, the captain of 50, uh -huh. and the honorable man, uh -huh. and the counselor, and the cunning artificer, and the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes. So he's going to take them. And when you read these things, those are the qualifications of the men in Israel. Especially, go back to verse 3. Verse 3. The captain of 50 uh -huh. and the honorable man. And the honorable man. Didn't we just read in Hebrews 13 and 4, marriage is an honorable thing? God says, look, for your sins, I'm going to take that stuff from you. So how do we start to get those things back how do we begin to get those things back? Uh, Brother Nathan, Nathan, how do we begin to get those things back? By keeping the commandments. By keeping the commandments. Now, by laying with a brother and sister off rip when you first meet them, is that obeying the commandments? No, sir. What does Sirach 12, uh, Sirach 6 say? Sirach 6 and 7. Prove, prove a friend. Prove a friend. So by us, Rehearsing the righteous acts, we're going to start getting our houses in order more and more. And then what we're going to also do is we're going to be an example in our neighborhoods. We're going to be an example to our families. But when you just land from person to person to person, you're no different. You're the same Negro you was before you came in. Your family, your friends, 
and even your co-workers should see a difference in you from the time that you came in up until now. You had something? Yeah, I was thinking, we, we going over the scriptures of Rock 6 and 7, which is a very important scripture. It says, prove a friend. But you got to keep in mind, too, how you going to prove a friend when you ain't even prove yourself? Thanks. Brothers and sisters be ready to jump up and get married, but haven't proved they self. Are you ready for marriage? Those are the words you got to ask yourself. Am I ready? Because this is what I come with being married. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. Give me a... Sarai 37 and 27. And you got to prove yourself first. Make sure you, uh, you, you know, you lining up, measuring up to the man you should be, and women measuring up to the woman you should be. Read Sarai chapter 37, verse 27. My son, prove thy soul with thy life, and see what is evil for it. Right. Meaning, you're going to prove yourself. You know, like, you know yourself. You know what? This may not be for me. This is right here. Is too bad, you know what I'm saying? I got a jealous what, uh, 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 jealous spirit on me, yeah. and I'm, I'm trying to be with this sister. And you know this sister gonna get the look from the brothers. Now every every look the sister get from brothers, guess what? You want to go upside a brother head. <laughs> you gonna get your behind beat up doing that, bro. <laughs> but you yeah, you know, put out exactly. You didn't know that when you got this sister. When you were trying to prove this sister that this sister is a nice looking sister, brothers are gonna look. It's nothing wrong with looking as long as you don't say nothing and touch. Read. And give not that until it. Right. And Fuck. give not if it's not good for you, hey man, hey, you may not it may not be the sister for you. Or may not be the may not be the brother for you. Yeah, go ahead some more. Uh, verse 28. Mm -hmm. For all things are not profitable for all men. Neither have every soul pleasure in everything. Right. Not every day. Just because this brother may got a, a, a bad sister, he can deal with it. Don't bother him. No, man, they can look long, they don't touch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure you know what's good for you at the end of the day. You got to make sure you know what's good for you. If not, you set yourself up for destruction. And you better not look too long. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say off the rip. You better not look too long. You better not look too long. Get yourself in trouble. You got something? Hey, let me, uh, okay. Let me, uh, get the article I sent to you. Read the article. It's going back to proving somebody, right? Proving somebody. Like that first article I also put it up, this going to go in right along with the scriptures. Uh, all right. Read that. Voice Philly. Child abuse is 40 times more likely when single parents find new par partners. All right, uh, scroll down. And I want you to read from control, control. So this is what I read. Uh, Fine says, none of the less children of the horse. Keep strong. Right there. Uh, start from like none of the less. Nonetheless, children of divorce and later re remarriage are twice as likely to academically twice as likely to academically, behaviorally, and socially struggle as children of first marriage families. About 20 to 25 percent struggle compared with 10 percent a range of research finds. They, they are also more likely to be heard. Read. In their article, in their article, Child Abuse and Other Risks of Not Living with Both Parents, published in Anthology and Socially, Social biology, Martin Daly and Marco Wilson. No, if their parents find new partners, children are 40 times more likely than those who live with biological parents to be sexually or physically abused. According to a Missouri-based study of children living in homes with unrelated adults, children are nearly 50 times as likely to die of inflicted injuries as children living with two biological parents. These are worrying statistics, uh, both disturbing and scary. All right, you can stop. So we, we see the impact of not being in a home with both parents. You got to be to death by these new men or even new women in, 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 in the lives. So that's why it's important to approve a person first before you break into your home around your kids. Give me some rock level 29. I got a few scriptures. So rock level 29. Because sometimes we like to do, uh, if we see somebody that look good to us, and we bring them to the house. 
Oh, he does good. He's eating handsome. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said before, many times, a single parents, like especially women, you might have kids. Pedophiles look for women with kids. That's what they want. They not behind you. They looking for your kids. Oh, you got kids? Oh, I love kids. But hey, be careful. Go ahead. Sirach so chapter 11, verse 29. Bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man hath many trained. So God says, not bring every man into your house. And many of our people have found that out the hard way. But we don't have to speak about that in a so called black community, Latino community. Chauvinization happens a lot. A lot is unreported. People still, people grow up like that, being hurt. Or whatnot, so they have trust issues. All right, but if anybody got down that way, you know, like the truth say, you gotta um, get get over and move toward the uh, future. I right, give me Sirach 37 and 20. Sirach 37 and 20. Because you're a new creature in Christ if that happened to you. All right, talking to you, uh, ground ups. Right? Sirach chapter 37, verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. But be around a godly man. How can you know somebody godly? If you don't know him, if you're not saying him, keep the commandments. You don't know this man from from uh from uh from the moon, right? From down the street, but we quick to bring people around our kids, around our children. Read that again. But be continually with a godly man. And you know how y'all can help know somebody God? Be them in the congregation and not outside the body. You know, we got leadership that observes uh people's actions. We know what goes on. You know, we can guide you. Like, no, that brother ain't ready for marriage. Like Bishop saying, no, this is not ready for marriage. But some people choose the hallway and found the, the hallway. Read. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Whom you know to keep the commandments of the Lord. Right? Give me um, Sirach 14. Sirach 14. Sirach chapter 4, verse 10. And first of all, you know, when you deal with these, when you start approving a man, Right? You should ask this, you should ask this man, do you have any kids? Right? See how you how you run your kids. Right? See if you even want any kids. Because a lot of uh, people in the world, they don't like other men's kids. They don't have no love for other man's children. So they always treat them, they'll beat them, they'll cuss them out, they do all type of uh, wicked stuff to their kids because that's not their kids. So they hate that. They know you lay down before them and had a kid. They, some men can't take that. So they take it out on the kid. Go ahead. So Rock chapter 4, verse 10. Be as a father unto the fatherless, and instead of a husband unto their mother, so shall thou be as the son of the most high. And this for the men. You gotta be his father unto the fathers. Instead of a husband. This for y'all gotta look for y'all single sisters looking for a husband. You got kids. You gotta look to see if a man gonna love. Take on you and his and your kids because once y'all married, this is kids too. He can't treat them no different than his own biological kids. Y'all gotta understand that. Y'all gotta really pay attention to how somebody carries us around your kids, how you treat other kids. Read that again. Be as a father unto the fatherless, and instead of the husband unto their mother, so shall thou be as the son of the most high. And so so y'all brothers, y'all man is not married. Oh, we y'all get married. Remember, if you got a spouse that have kids, that's your kids now. And like, now nah, let, let the daddy take care of them. No, that you the father now. You're supposed to be. If you're a righteous man, that is your kid. That is your kid. Just like your own blood now, right? Uh, one last scripture. Give me uh, Titus, Titus 1 and verse 6. No, Titus 1 and verse, yeah, verse 6 and verse 7. It's going to some proven it. You gotta see if this man has this type of characteristics. And this takes time. It don't take no no week. You know, some people are gonna look at you after a week. It don't take no month, it don't take a year. It takes years, it takes time. And a lot of us are too impatient. We don't wanna wait out what God got waiting on us. Then you end up being the devil instead. Go ahead. Titus chapter one, verse six. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife. Having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God. So that man must be blameless as the steward of God. This your husband. He's a leader. Go ahead. It's supposed to be. Peace of the truth. Go ahead. Not self-willed. Not soon angry. Not soon angry. 
Anger is you taking a hammer and beating a little seven-year-old head in. That's anger. And then beating a woman to, to the point of death. So he got a murder charge, first degree murder, and got an attempted second degree murder. But this is somebody that's sister, Gary T told us, I'm gonna marry that guy one day. Oh, he good. He good. Yeah, he man, he pay my bills, tell me anything because he pay your bills. But do he do he fear God? Do he love his people? That's it. And a man can pay bills. That don't make you a man because you pay bills. Yeah, you require to do it. I agree. Not given to wine. No striker. Not given to filthy lucre. No striker. If you was observing, this see this man was uh, if you was observing this man, you would know he's not a drunkard. He's, he's no striker. Meaning he's not gonna go inside my head, he's not gonna abuse my kid. Read. But a lover of hospitality. A lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Holy, temperate. He can control his temper. He ain't gonna fly off the handle and go outside your head, put a hammer to you or your, your kid's head. So y'all keep that in mind, sisters and brothers. So y'all, hey, all we can do is give y'all counsel scripts. And, and you know what's funny? For those sisters who want just, you know, want a man just to pay bills, that's not a husband, that's a sponsor. Right. That's what a lot of sisters want nowadays. They want just someone, if they have a man for every day of the week, or they have a man for specific bills, that's a sponsor. That's not a husband. And that's the scary thing that most of our sisters, even some of these sisters in the truth that ain't got their mind all the way right, that's what they want. They want somebody to pay their bills and employ their back out whenever they need it. Hey, I'll listen, man, that's a word of thought. What's that guy named Kevin Samuels? They yeah. all discussed about a six-figure man, all right? Yeah. So what that man do make six figures, but he a child molester. He a child molester. He's a beater. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you cannot get nothing good outside these doors, outside the truth. You're not going to be no real man in the world. So you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to observe the time. You got to observe your people in the truth. That's how you're going to get a godly man after, after time. And, and you know what's funny? I've been watching a lot of that guy's videos, too. Some of the stuff he say is legit. Some of the stuff that he said, when he talks about an order in the house and how a woman, women need to be in their place. And then this is the thing, we're trained that that's a negative thing. We're trained that's a bad thing. What's wrong with my wife making me a sandwich if I'm outside or if I'm working on the house or I'm trying to make our house better? What's wrong with that? If I'm outside cutting our grass that, that's to our house, that makes my house or her house look better. All I want, I'm the one out there cutting the grass. Just bring me something to drink. I ain't got her outside cutting the grass. Y'all see what I'm talking about? There's an order to everything. Hey, house, can I get one more shrimp? Yeah, because like you're saying that about the sandwich situation, this right here is a remedy about that. Y'all ain't getting the spirit, man. Make your own sandwich. Y'all the spirit. Give me 1 Corinthians 11. 1 <laughs> Corinthians 11 and verse 3. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is what? Is the man. It's the man. Uh -huh. And the head of Christ is God. So you can't skill pass your man to get to Christ. It's not work that way. That man is Christ in the house. Let's jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. No, verse 8. I'm sorry. Verse, verse 8. eight. For the man is not of the woman. For the man is not of the woman. Go ahead. But the woman of the man. But the woman of the man. Read. Neither was the man created for the woman. So the man won't crave to fish you a sandwich. <laughs> go now. Hey, go fish me a sandwich. No, I don't worry like this. Read it again. Neither was the man created for the woman. But the woman for the man. But the woman for the man. Because you was just said you was created for the help me. God created you for your husband. As long as you're not telling you the sin, you gotta do it. Simple as that. Hey, give me uh, Sirach 36 and 24. This is very important proof. This scripture right here. Sirach chapter 36, verse 24. He that giveth a wife, be given a possession, and a help, uh, a help like unto himself. A help like what? A help like unto himself. Like and unto what? Like unto himself. Like unto himself. So when you out here proving, you looking for a brother that fish you like, you know, man, this brother right here, man, we right, you know, I like to work out, he like to work out. 
You know, he work, I work. What can he bring to the table? You know what I'm saying? We are we just alike. But in the world they say what opposites attract? No, the Bible says like unto thyself. You know what I'm saying? What does like I'm getting a uh, 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 getting a brother over here? You know, you're getting a brother and the brother don't work. You busting your behind, you got two jobs and the brother's just sitting back here. He just looking to get what you got. I can't say at home face PlayStation. It's about something that long. Hey. And they want to use your card? Hey, <laughs> no, they out there are holders. These days they are out there for sure. Yep. Me and being little boys. Read it from the top. He that getteth a wife be getting a possession. Hey, when you own something, you need to understand the men, when you get a wife, you get a possession. A possession. No different, I mean, I ain't gonna say no different, but give you an example, you get a car, you're gonna take care of that car. You're gonna make sure the oil is changed, you're gonna make sure the engine is taken care of, there's tires on that car. If you don't have a job, how you gonna provide for this car? No different from the women. How you this woman got this woman, women gotta go and uh go to the hospitals, get their checkups and all this type of stuff. You ain't got no insurance because you ain't got no job. But you looking for a wife. Negro, you backwards. Sit down somewhere. No, but they ain't going to the red flag, so. That's a, yeah. But, but sisters look and see, oh, look at the muscles. <laughs> but now you put that size 15 up there behind. Hey, hey, officer, can y'all get his shoe out of my behind? Nah, sister, we told you. <laughs> Using the muscles of choking. Yeah. <laughs> put it to sleep. Facts. 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 Really and awesome. when you yeah. come up here, yeah. we're going to be like, that's good for you. <laughs> because we told you to sit down. And then you look at your son who got his head beat in with a hammer. This dude was a maniac. If y'all didn't notice, he had blood all on his on his shoulders. All on his head. From the splash, from the blood. Y'all didn't pay attention. Pay attention to detail. Crazy. And then the police, somebody put hands on him too. His nose bust. I can look yeah. at him tell. His face is full. But watch this. Read it off his albums. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. A pillow of rest. You men out here trying to look for these women with the coke shaped bottle, don't know you got a drag. You waking up to hot uh, uh, hot bricks on you, getting beat up every time you come home. <laughs> you end up washing the dishes, cleaning her drawers. Damn. Cleaning her drawers. What the, what? Come on. You got the head wrap on everything. Yeah, man. Hey. Why she calling you a band? A B A N. <laughs> Y'all know what that is, right? Who don't know what that is? Who don't know what the band is? We got some faces. Y'all can tell a lot of people don't know what that is. <laughs> no, they laugh because they know, they what, know what it is. is. <laughs> All right. All crazy. Yeah, that's it, y'all. <laughs> yeah, but boys, what y'all got something out of the class? I mean, this is the thing. A lot of uh, a lot of us think that proving is not something that's that important. It's vital because you're getting to know the person. And this is the thing, a lot of us judge people based on their looks. Like, well, I don't want to be with her, she's too short. But, bro, you short. <laughs> or the sister be like, I want him. This mother, this man got muscles on top of muscles, but the sister, she's she shaped, she shaped like this. <laughs> like, sis, come on now, what was the last time you went by the gym? I went by the gym yesterday. No, since you passed by the gym. <laughs> You know, know what you, obviously you're going to be attracted to what you're attracted to. But at the same time, take the time to prove, brothers and sisters. And a lot of these brothers and sisters getting put out, it won't happen. All right? And then on top of that, matter of fact, who was you at? You was in Ciroc, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Ciroc 37? 36. 36? Go to Ciroc 37. And 16. Ciroc chapter 37, verse 16. Let reason go before every enterprise, and counsel before every action. And counsel before every action. So when you're interested in someone, come talk to leadership first. Because we might know some things about that brother or sister that you don't know. Because whenever you talk to anybody, you're talking to that person's representative. You're not talking to that real brother or sister. You're talking to their rep, their sales rep. They're just trying to make the sale most of the time. So that's why we're saying it's very vital for you to prove a brother or sister before you lay down with them. You got something? Yeah, before I was right. Hey, who ever, 
what you said it represented. Who ever been on the job interview and had a great chance you ever been on the job interview? Oh, he ain't got no job interview. All Let right. your job call your house. You put that phone voice on real quick. Hello. So you sound all nasally real quick. Right, right. Like before you get the interview, right? But when you get the interview, whoever, whoever showed their true sales if you if you sweat, if you lazy at work. You know what I'm saying? You if you're on the job, oh you smoke me on time. Oh I did, I do this and that. Oh, I'm doing anything you ask me to do. No one dang well, you lying. You don't do nothing to ask you to do. You get mad if they ask you to pick up a piece of paper and it's your job on the floor. Man, where you pick up a piece of paper? Who gonna who gonna tell the truth if you if you lazy in your job? Yeah man, I'm 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 gonna work real hard. And you know what they're saying, officer? They just don't know. I get this job and we pay every day. I'm going to put it on cruise control. Man, I see it too, man. People be getting mad for doing their job at work. Man, what do you ask me to do this, man? I'm tired of this stuff. I'm like, quit then. Quit. But that's what that's what the brothers say. Well, once I get that tail, it's, it's, I'm, locked, I'm locked in. I ain't got to do nothing. Get a baby out here. I'm yeah. upset. Oh, yeah, I never be on you. I never cheat. I'm a, I'm a good man. I'll be a good father of your kids. They say, just so tricky, then they got you. It's a wrap. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.